Hi everyone, and welcome again to Metal, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to that channel and click that notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So click the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating one more model that can be applied to investigate the dynamics of financial time series akin to uh, more simple models or more famous models like arch and gauge models and some of the advanced models such as the generalized autoregressive score models or gas models the today's hero autoregressive conditional density family of models uh, deals with inputting some probability density function onto your data but also allowing the characteristics of this function to vary with time according to how your data behaves. And unlike in the Arsh and Garsh models or uh, generalizations of Garsh such as autoregressive conditional skewness or autoregressive conditional courtesies, where it's the moments of the distribution that vary according to past data realizations, or unlike the gas model where the main driver of change is the goodness of fit at a particular point in time, the autoregressive conditional density family of models approaches this issue very directly. It basically allows the parameters of the distribution itself to vary uh, according to past realizations of your time series. And today we're going to apply a quite sophisticated autoregressive conditional density model uh, inspired by the Johnson SU distribution which we have got a separate video on the simple estimation of it here, if you'd like to learn more about Johnson SU distribution function in its own. Uh, and we'll apply it to 10 years worth of daily S&P 500 returns. So from start of November 2013 until end of October 2023. The Johnson SU distribution function is four parametric. So it has two location parameters, Xi and Gamma, and two scale parameters, Lambda and Delta. And to maintain the uh, analogy to Garsh and Arsh family of models, we will vary only the scale parameters lambda and delta according to the ARCD, autoregressive conditional density logic. We will first estimate the best fit Johnson SU distribution function across the entire sample, and then we'll allow the scale parameters lambda and delta to vary according to those autoregressive functions. We will have separate persistence parameters alpha and beta for lambda and delta scale parameters and they'll um, vary according to past uh, conditional scale so past conditional scale lambda t minus one past conditional scale delta t minus one as well as the lagged uh, squared error term so disturbance basically what this model conceptualizes is that the probability density function or the distribution function in general that governs the process according to which returns of S&P 500 emerge can change in terms of its scale, in terms of the fatness of tails, in terms of how extreme events uh, manifest themselves according to past realizations of unexpected uh, S&P 500 volatility, which in terms of uh, financial logic is meaningful. So first let's uh, estimate the Johnson SU distribution function based on a constant um, parameter assumption. So both persistent terms for both shape of, for both scale parameters will be zeros. But to do that, we'll need to estimate all of those parameters as well as the probability density function. So let's start. Uh, the starting value of our distribution parameters would be the baseline values divided by one minus the persistent parameter beta and we'll drag it across. And every next value will be equal to the previous value of the parameter times the persistence parameter beta, where we lock the row. We add the second persistence parameter alpha, which will lock the row for as well, times the lag residual squared. And here we need to lock the column, but not the row. And finally, plus the baseline value of this distribution parameter, 
which in the case of lambda and the delta are lambda naught and the delta naught. For those, again, we log the row and not the column. And as we enforce it throughout the sample and across all four parameters, we'll see that if our baseline assumption is, for example, that location parameters are xi and gamma are zeros and scale parameters lambda and delta are ones, the constant uh, parameter assumption is fulfilled. They are zeros and ones throughout the entire sample. And this is consistent with uh, both uh, persistence parameters alpha and beta being zeros across all four parameters and more importantly across the two scale parameters of interest. But to retrieve the residual or the unexpected return of normal return, we need to uh, acknowledge that in case of complicated distribution functions such as Johnson SU, we cannot equate expected values with location parameters because the expected value of S&P 500 return is not just equal to xi, which is the apparent location parameter, it's actually equal to a pretty complicated function that involves all four parameters. And so, to retrieve the uh, unexpected disturbance term, we will need to take this relationship into account. So our expected return is xi minus lambda times the exponent of one over two times delta squared and times the hyperbolic sign of the ratio between gamma and delta. Again, as all those parameters vary with time, we don't need to lock anything, we can just enforce it throughout. And obviously in the baseline, where both of our location parameters are zeros, we'll get an expected return of zero. Quite straightforward there. The residual is just the difference between the observed return and the expected return, that we can also apply throughout. And for the probability density function, we just need to code in the Johnson SU uh, distribution function. So here it is delta divided by lambda times the square root of 2 pi. Then the second fraction is 1 over the square root of 1 plus x, which is the S&P 500 return, minus psi, the first location parameter divided by lambda, the first scale parameter, quantity squared. And that finalizes the second fraction. And finally, we need to add the exponential term, minus a half times the parentheses involved in gamma, the second location parameter, plus delta, the second scale parameter, times the arc hyperbolic sign, or inverse hyperbolic sign, of the S&P 500 return, minus psi over lambda, that has to be squared, and the parentheses is closed yielding the value of the probability density function. A good sanity check is that as our parameters are the same, and a good sanity check is that as all our parameters are the same, the value of the probability density function is the same across the entire sample. And now we can calculate the log likelihood, which is the sum of natural logs of those probability density functions. But again, to implement a simple workaround over potential errors, uh, that we'll encounter um, around the optimization process, I'll just put an if error function through. And if there's an error, so if there is a negative number or the number is too small, we'll just spit out negative 1,000, just so the optimization algorithm converges more easily. And now we are ready to do the first optimization where we do optimize our starting values of distribution parameters uh, and do not look at the persistence parameters which are the key for uh, ARCD models which will be our second step. So we go to solver, specify that we want to maximize log likelihood by changing just the four initial parameters and we untick the make unconstrained variables non-negative box because location parameters can be negative. We click solve and wait for a bit until the system converges to the optimal solution. And the system has just converged to the optimal solution. We can see the optimal parameter values that yield the log likelihood of 8,171 approximately. So let's copy that and paste it as values as our initial log likelihood. And we'll be able to see how much does the goodness of fit improve when we allow our scale parameters lambda and delta to vary according to the ARCD logic, the autoregressive conditional density model. 
how essential those effects are to describe the dynamics of stock returns with greater precision. To do that, we can just go data solver and add those four cells to our variable cells, which are the persistence parameters alpha and beta for our scale parameters lambda and delta. And we click solve and wait until the system can register the optimal solution. Although I need to warn you, this might take quite a bit longer. And solver has just converged the optimal solution we can see that our parameters have changed and those persistence parameters are now quite high actually. So the uh, scale parameters lambda and delta actually evolve quite a bit with time responding to the disturbance of the uh, S&P 500 returns. So let's copy this log likelihood as values over there and calculate the chi-squared statistic using likelihood ratio logic so two times the difference between log likelihood values uh, in two models. We have got our chi-squared statistic of 592. So the uh, unrestricted model, which allows four additional parameters to vary, produces a fit that's uh, considerably better. But to test it for statistical significance, we need to input how many additional parameters have we included, four, and evaluate the significance using a right-tailed chi-squared distribution plugging in the statistic and the number of parameters, which yields a p-value that's very close to zero, meaning that the uh, improvement in the goodness of fit by including the ARCD facts, the autoaggressive conditional density facts, is quite substantial. Uh, further extensions of that could involve allowing the location parameters to vary as well. That is quite easy to achieve. You just extend the number of cells you allow to vary or experimenting with the autoaggressive function here. You can take absolute values instead of squared values. That could also work quite well. Or you could try to estimate directional threshold effects by allowing asymmetric responses to positive or negative innovations in terms of the disturbance term. And finally, uh, you need not stop at the Johnson SU distribution function. You can take um, an experiment with a lot of various distribution functions that are applicable to stock return modeling and try to vary their location, scale, and shape parameters according to the logic of ARCD. That means that this family of models is very broad and very flexible, and you can find a valid tool for uh, application to your particular time series, be it a stock return or any other application. And that's all there is for the estimation of the ARCD, autoregressive conditional density model in Excel, Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm interested in your first suggestions for videos as business finance economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.